In this slide, I will be explaining the hormonal regulation of red blood cell synthesis. So remember, red blood cells are very important for oxygenation. So the number of red blood cells that we need and the level of oxygen we need in our body needs to have some homeostasis in order for our body to meet its metabolic demand. So let's look at this pathway in which we're regulating the homeostasis of red blood cell count and oxygen carrying capacity. Let's start with step one. So remember, these, this video is going to go along with the lecture note that I typed up in the PowerPoint. So in the PowerPoint, you will see a slide with the picture, just like this, and then the words that go along with explaining it. This video just allows me to point and guide you through it, but you're able to read and follow the steps along as well. So let's start with this. So step one, so if your body is sensing, step one, that the oxygen levels that the blood is carrying is below the metabolic demand, below the need of the body, this lower oxygen carrying capacity is going to be the stimulus, which then turns on the endocrine gland at step two. And in this case, the gland is the kidney. Okay, the kidney will release the hormone at step three called erythropoietin or EPO. Erythro is for erythrocytes, which is another name for red blood cells. Poiesis is to generate. So erythropoietin is the hormone that's going to generate red blood cells. This hormone will circulate the body and bind to the target tissue, the red bone marrow. The red bone marrow binding the EPO will then start to generate red blood cells. The red blood cell count will increase at step five as a response to this hormonal pathway and hopefully increase the oxygen carrying capacity. When this oxygen carrying capacity is increased to meet the metabolic demand, this should go back and negatively feedback and turn off the endocrine gland, the kidney, to tell the kidney that EPO is no longer needed. When oxygen capacity drops again, the pathway will be turned on again to make more red blood cells. So what type of stimulus will make your body feel like it do not have enough oxygen? This can be normal things that happen, such as increase in athletic training, going from Phoenix to Flagstaff, so higher elevation, making oxygen less available, will then make the body feel that it has lower oxygen carrying capacity. In addition, pregnancy, because there's a demand by the baby to have more oxygen, will also sense that the oxygen capacity is needed. But this also includes diseases like asthma, anemia, lung disease, a heart disease, and all sorts of conditions that makes the body feel the oxygenation is not adequate. So does this pathway really fix all oxygen carrying capacity problems? Some of them, yes. If you can fix it with increased red blood cell count, then the, it will fix that problem. But however, if the oxygen is having a hard time coming in, in the case of lung disease, then this pathway can help with the situation, but does not fix the problem. So this is the pathway of the EPO. Uh, I encourage you to draw and practice it, making sure you know each step, what turns it on, what gland is involved, what hormones involved, and what are the responses. So it's not as hard of a, as a pathway that we have learned, but this explains what happened in the pathway. 